office, uh, there was a couple that were closed down because what they did is, once you go to a psychic, then you become addicted to their, you know, to the uh, the things that they say, and sometimes they make you feel good, sometimes make you feel bad. But some psychics were charging to get rid of bad things. So um, the only things you can get rid of is the things that you believe in, the things that you want. So uh, don't go to a psychic and pay a lot of money to have them get rid of things. Um, I have a, a, I do a psychic workshop on, on things. I, I'm a professional psychic. I work, uh, which will start in the middle of March. Uh, every Sunday, I go to a uh, place and I do readings all day. So, and then if there's uh, uh, psychic fairs, I go to psychic fairs and I do readings. Uh, reading is just something you sit down and you look at somebody. I what I do is I look at somebody and then when we do the, you know, I kind of look at things and we connect on some some level. But I don't know how that happens. I it's just like. I can't tell you because it's always happened to me and it's never, you know, there's no instruction book for that. Um, I, we'll go over the tools about if you want to do uh, psychic readings. Uh, how many people in here do psychic readings or uh, have any psychic abilities? Yeah. Um, <laughs> every mother, every, every grandmother is a psychic person because they know what their children and their grandchildren are doing. They know... And it's a sense of knowing. It's not like something that you're taught. It's just that's what you do. Now, if you could imagine expanding that to seeing all the things that are around you, all the uh, messages from the trees, all the springtime feelings, all the signs and omens, the chipmunks, the, uh, um, the cardinals. When people see cardinals, they believe it's a, uh, it's a visitation. A lot of people, a visitation from a loved one's loss or angels. Uh, there's angel numbers, the uh, numbers that come up on the, on the clock, and uh, some people believe that those have special meaning. And this all falls into the whole thing of paranormal and what you believe and what you are. That's the whole thing. And it doesn't matter to anybody who you are or what you are until you believe it in your heart. And that's the, the, the big thing. Um, uh, tools for psychic readings, uh, tarot, uh, you know, the tarot cards. I have a copy of the tarot spread. This is where you place the cards and which, what it means. And the cards I have in my little bag here. Uh, and it's just, uh, my mother used to use just playing cards back when I was, uh, you know, very young, a long time ago. And the, <laughs> these are uh, things that happen. You can use any cards. Right now, there's so many different types of decks out there. There's animal speak things. There's a and it just takes practice to use, but you have to have a belief that they're going to be used and that they're going to, uh, to do something, something for you. Um, when I do a reading, what I get is choices that you have. Nothing, I don't tell you which, what to pick. I just say choices. And um, I envision choices like a big wheel. And all around the wheel are choices. And whenever that choice touches the ground, that's when that choice is valid. You can make the choice. If you don't make the choice then, it passes by. So it's just a matter of choices on what you want to do, where you want to live, uh, how you want to live. Um, and psychic abilities is just a knowing. That's, that's, that's what I see. It's a knowing. And everybody has it. Like I say, mothers and uh, you know, grandmothers, they, it's very strong in some families um, because that's their belief system. Now. Um, whether or not it conflicts with your religion or if you are a, a religious or a spiritual person um, th that would be up to you yeah I I, I, yeah, I don't have a microphone and I can't yell any louder um, yeah I, I've done readings for um, people who are members of the clergy and uh, there doesn't seem to be any uh, problem with that because they most religious clergy people are uh, they're actually very open-minded they're not uh, as narrow-minded as we might think because if uh, I grew up as a, a, a Episcopal and I was an altar boy from the time that I could walk until I get out of high school um, I <laughs> anytime there was a, a high mass or a, a funeral or something to church I got let out of school and I went to the ch a church. I almost became a priest, but things change and your 
opinions of the world and the universe change, and sometimes you see that change as the, it moves you in there. So it doesn't matter what religion you are or what you believe in, it's, again, what this is. And if you're forced to believe in something like the mask mandate or something like that, sometimes it irritates people to the point where they get become violent. And sometimes if you try to change someone's religion, they become uh, very violent. Um, is I, oh, one thing I also want, I don't want to offend anybody. I'm an equal opportunity offender. Um, <laughs> so if some, what I say is my belief, and it's not the belief of the library or anything like that. It's, a, it, it's just what I believe. So it's a, uh, a bunch of things that go on in my head. Um, this morning, I, I just happened to come across the person uh, with the same last name, and I got reading about what her research was done. And that's what I do. I do a lot of research on everything. It doesn't matter what it is. It's like the library is full of books. If you walk over and pick up any book and start to read it, you'll become very knowledgeable in whatever that subject is. But it's just learning. And as a psychic person, sometimes you don't have to read the book. You can pick up the book and just feel what's in the, in the book. And that's like, uh, how many people have walked, like you walk into a bookstore or a library and suddenly a book falls off the shelf. You don't know what it is, but you, and then you pick it up, and that's that's how things start. You, you get you get motivated to look for these small little symbols. Um, does anybody in here do psychic readings at all, or does anybody in here really want to do psychic readings? It's oh yeah, it, it, it's it's really very rewarding. Uh, I don't want to say you can't make a lot of money. You can make money if you do it every day. There's a few places you can get readings in here. There's one in Chester. There's one in uh, Sugarloaf. One in New Paltz. Uh, the Crystal Center over in uh, Wordsboro. Um, and uh, I know the one up in New Paltz just started their uh, walk-in. It's a 10-minute reading. You just walk in and you sit down and, and they have a bunch of readers there. So they're doing, I believe they're doing it every that, weekend. The awareness shop? Yes, the awareness shop. Mm -hmm. We're in a shop has been around a long time. There's a couple of other uh, places up there. Um, I've never done any readings up at the awareness shop. I did readings in Chester. I've done a couple uh, psychic fairs. We did a couple in, in Walker Valley. And a psychic, if you go to a psychic fair, you'll meet maybe 10 or 12 people who do readings and they all use different tools. Um, some of them are tarot card readers. Uh, some of them, uh, they have a uh, a bowl with bones in and they shake the bones and do all these things. Other people have uh, different types of cards, angel cards. Um, if you go to a medium, a medium doesn't normally have tools. What they have is they connect with uh, a spirit that has uh, passed or anything. Uh, mediumship is, to me is very, very tough uh, because I feel the emotions and that's one of the issues that you have if you become very psychic. You become emotionally involved with that with that person's like having grandchildren and you you know they could be in Florida and all of a sudden you know that they're they're not feeling good or something and so you you try to communicate to find out what's going on and that's what psychic is about it's about caring about uh, uh, you know uh, connecting with other people let's see what else let me just do oh, you talk about uh, the bones and there was something else I wanted to oh, oh dowsing rods and tea leaves Oh, yes, tea leaves. That, um, that was in Harry Potter. They, uh, they showed where the, uh, the wolf, the, the, the tea leaves. Uh, does anybody read tea leaves here? Okay, because my, my mom used to read tea leaves. As, you know, the, I don't, yeah, I don't think it's, right, I don't think it's very prevalent today because not that many people drink tea, so. There's all kinds of tools that you use, but essentially what you're doing is you're connecting with that person and it's a, uh, sometimes it's a one-on-one -on -one where you just connect with that person and their spirit talks to you. Other times it's you connect with the universe, the universe gives you the information so that you can give it back to the person. So there's a lot of different ways that it happens. And um, it does get very uh, complex. And 
one of the big things you have to remember when you're doing a reading is once the reading is over, it's done. It's, uh, if I do a reading for you and we get up and we walk away, I don't recognize who you are after that. So I can't redo a reading because it's, it's, it's just um, the connection that I have and uh, I have with you or with the universe, once it's broken, I don't even recognize the person because I am not the person doing the reading. Someone is giving me the information. So it's not something that I make up. It's something that comes, and it gets to be funny over at the, uh, the Crystal Center. I, we did, there's a, I have a, a little room in the basement. We get up, we walk, I walk upstairs. If the person walks away, the only way I know who they are is sometimes I recognize their clothes. But after that, I don't recognize the thing because I let it go. And that's what psychic energy is. It's a fleeting thing. Uh, if you were psychic all the time, if I sat here and tried to read everybody, I would go crazy because it just would be so much. It's like with your children or your, uh, you know, your grandchildren, you know something's going on. And if you have that feeling, and sometimes it's a feeling of dread, sometimes it's happiness, but it really bugs you until you can figure out what's going on. And if you can imagine having that happen all the time, it's not much fun. Uh, and the things about uh, doing readings and being psychic is you have to know what symbols mean. So if you're, you're suddenly you're talking to somebody and uh, some picture comes in your mind or something, what do you know that that means? It's like uh, if you go to uh, John Edwards, anybody seen John Edwards? He's very expensive. He's very, very good. Um, he meets, uh, I guess, in Westchester a couple times, but he is very expensive. He has a whole thing of symbols what certain symbols mean to him, a white rose, a red rose, a black rose, all of these symbols are things that he can, he sees in the audience, he sees around people, and he knows what they mean. So if you're learning how to be, to do readings and learning what's going on, you may see someone have a symbol. Sometimes it could be a, a certain color that they have, and that certain color would mean what kind of condition they're in. Um, one of the other things that happens with psychic people is they um, sometimes fade out. In other words, they don't always pay attention. So that's my excuse for not paying attention to people because <laughs> um, I go someplace else. And um, how many people know about channeling? You know, we haven't had a channeler come in the area in quite a while. A channeler would be someone who gets messages from the universe, the uh, space, there's some space uh, people who would uh, channel, uh, channel information and uh, some people channel information from Christ. I know a, a lot of Christ readers that are out there. Uh, they, I, I don't want to say, they claim to have a direct connection and they get this information. Yeah. And uh, sometimes what they use is they use writing. In other words, you just sit down with a piece of paper and a pen right. and automatic writing. Uh, sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. Other times you'll have to look through the whole page and find two sentences that mean something. Um, it's like Nostradamus. Everybody's heard of Nostradamus. He was, he was a, uh, he wrote with a mirror because he was uh, back in the days when you were psychic and did things, uh, you did the devil's work and they chopped your head off. So he kind of hit it that way, but he, is one of the most famous people because his quatrains were just four lines. People have interpreted those four lines to mean certain things in history and are still finding out history about or trying to put the future in, what, in, in, in the words that he says. So um, if you want to do that, you can do automatic writing. You just sit down and whatever comes to your mind. And the thing is, you start by writing uh, poems, just small little four, uh, you know, four line things. and. If you ask whoever you believe in, uh, gods, goddesses, or whatever, that to give you the information, you may be finding information from the universe, and you might become very popular. You could write a book and make millions of dollars, or they could burn you at the stake. You know, <laughs> it's kind of what goes on. So it's a, it's really interesting on on uh, the psychic ability. And if you want to improve it, the one thing is meditation. You have to calm your mind, and it it's not really easy to do because everybody thinks that what happens is you sit down and you get really calm and everything goes away. And, uh, 
uh, that, that's not what happens. What happens is all the information that's out there becomes a big jumble, poof. And as you meditate, that meditation or that information becomes more universal. It becomes flatter. It becomes more interesting. I just read a, a thesis this morning. Uh, someone talking about Native American flutes oh. and how not only uh, Native American, but they're talk Aborigine flutes. Any flutes from any parts of the, and the flute would be not the one that they play on the side. It's a it plays in the front. And that music will actually calm you. They've done, they've done things. And if you're a dis dissociative person, in other words, you have uh, uh, parts of your life are, are, are missing because of all of the things that went on in your life, trauma, uh, anger, all this kind of stuff. The flute is supposed to make that much calmer and then you can kind of put all the pieces back together. I've done readings for people who have gaps missing in their life. Literally, they don't remember a whole section of their life because there was some kind of a trauma. And a lot of this stuff now you see on TV, the sexual traumas, the, uh, the beatings and all this kind of stuff, people lose parts of their life. And as a therapist, if you go to a therapist, what they try to do is they try to reconnect those parts. And uh, Native American flutes are supposed to be the thing that really it will help you a lot on your calming and meditation and uh, things that you do. So, and it's now all available on the internet, so you don't have to pay for it. It's really, you know, just something to do. So if you want to become more psychic and more connected to the universe, and that's what the whole thing is, you need to find ways to relax and not worry about the pandemic, not worry about the inflation, not worry about the war in Russia, not worry about any of that stuff that's going on, which is bombarded us of all time. And how many people saw the Super Bowl and saw the halftime show. Oh, yuck. <laughs> oh, okay. It was great. Well, it, it not many, not that many people watched it. But if you're not part of that hip hop generation, that music is totally different than what I grew up with, and and, and the uh, classical music or any of the music that calms you down. That gets you very annoyed and very excited, and that's what the music was about. So, if you hear that in the background all the time you're not going to be able to relax. You're not going to be able to connect with yourself and then connect with the universe. And again, the Native American flute music, the uh, Native uh, American, the Hopis, the Cherokees, all of those, they had certain rituals that they would go through and playing the flute to connect themselves with the universe. Um, has anybody here heard of it? Any, anything uh, like that? around here where people go to connect to the universe? It's, 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 there is. I think that, isn't there a retreat up near that one room that, that went, that, I get the emails from all the time. There's a place somewhere near Ellenville. Right, it's, there's, there are very few and far between. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So where you can go and actually spend the weekend or spend the yeah. day, um, Meditating, talking to other people who have life interests. One of the things that we, we really um, have to do, and not many people do that, is connect with the universe. And sometimes that means reaching out and becoming connected with somebody or connecting with an organization. And uh, it's like walking in the mall. There's some stores that <clears throat> you go to go in the door, nah, you don't like that. Because something about the energy, and because we are all capable of reading that energy. We won't go into the mall. We won't go into those places. Um, it's, 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 it's really hard though, because sometimes we're forced to do these things. And when that happens, we kind of disconnect ourselves. We turn ourselves off so that we're able to function in that, in that environment. And, uh, uh, and then when we come out, it goes away, but it also leaves a gap because these traumas, they call it post-traumatic syndrome. People who have a trauma, uh, people in war, uh, in a car accident, uh, sometimes um, just having an argument, you become very, very disconnected with that, that time. And in order to get back to where you were, sometimes we have to take a leap and go around that. The, being a psychic person, you're able to then adjust yourself, get what you need to get past that spot, to move where you want to go, to be who you want to be. Um, 
I get the sense not everybody here is really happy with what's going on in their life, and they, they would like to change their life. They would like to do something different, either get someone to come in or get a hobby or get something that they really want to do, but because they have that barrier, they don't trust their heart, and they don't trust what they feel. So they, they kind of just hang out and, and do, don't do that kind of stuff. It's like healing. Um, one of the things about uh, being psychic is we're attracted to healers, and a healer is just someone who channels energy. And we, we sometimes we feel much better being around that person, like a pet. If you have a dog, that dog can heal you. And you allow it to because you pet it, you, you, you know, you're attracted to it. Um, it's, uh, a lot of people have uh, service animals and stuff that they take with them uh, because they're more connected to the pet than they are to their family because the pet never says no. The pet doesn't argue, and uh, sometimes the pet gets angry or at you, and uh, uh, they can be very spiteful like little children, but we kind of ignore that because we connect with it, and that's, again, the heart. Uh, the psychic comes from the heart, not from the brain. Uh, the brain is science and math and all that other uh, trivia stuff that you used to learn in school, but you don't learn anymore in school. So. Um, Up on something? Yeah, there's, there's it's a weird day. A weird day. Okay, let me just do this and see what I can find here because there's something. Oh, um, ghost whispers and um, mediums. Uh, has anybody here consulted a medium? Oh. Yeah, were you happy with it? Um, actually, yes. It's uh, it's amazing what someone who has the connection to be able to go into your life, find out that person that you're looking for, and that person will then communicate with them. Uh, a lot of times what happens is um, they say you hear things. Uh, um, I don't like to do mediumship, but I, I can do it. Um, there was one article in the paper where uh, I was giving, uh, we were at a psychic fair, and I gave a reading and a reporter was sitting right there next to the girl that I was giving the reading to and I connected with the girl's aunt or something and all this information came out and uh, it got into the newspaper, she wrote an article and the uh, where I was working, uh, it, um, I would walk down the hall and the teachers psh, 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 would all go into the, uh, into the room because everybody was afraid that I read minds. <laughs> uh, psychic people don't read minds, they read energy. And I don't want to say there's no way to keep a secret from a uh, psychic, but there are, you know, it, you have to open up in order to get the, uh, to let the information out. So, uh, um, but, uh, and that they call them ghost whispers, and uh, um, there are pet psychics. I don't know if you have a pet that's having problems. Um, the biggest complaint I see about pets is food. <laughs> they don't get the food that they like because we're trying to give them what we and the vet consider is the best for them. That's not what they want. They want, you know, they're like kids. They want candy, they want, they want other things. So um, there are psychics who uh, go out, and psychics who can read uh, energy about sickness. Um, one of the things that I do is I can, I can read when someone has a problem. I'm not a doctor, so I don't know what it is, but I can see something normally when people, and it goes in cycles. Sometimes I see a lot of uh, thyroid problems. Um, so I don't know if it's just the people show up with that or if it's just something that I, I just <coughs> happen to recognize. But I can see um, things that need correcting. Most people, their normal body chemistry changes over time and it changes with their food and stuff. Sometimes people don't recognize when they have a a problem. So um, unless they go and get a blood test or something, they don't know if they have you know, any kind of a, a problem. Their body tells me, and I don't know how, tells me that it's not normal for them. Um, when you go to the doctor, the doctor doesn't know what's normal for you. They, what's normal for someone of your age and your, uh, you know, your physical thing, uh, that's what they try. It's like blood pressure. What's normal blood pressure? 
Um, what normal is normal for you may not be normal for everybody else. Cholesterol is the same way. So um, the last time I went to the doctor, he finally looked at me and says, oh, you look really good for being 75, but he's trying to put me on all this stuff for, you know, blood pressure and, and uh, uh, you know, stuff. So they don't really pay attention to you. Now, is, is anybody here, have you been to a health kinesiologist? A uh, health kinesiologist, one who does muscle testing for uh, problems. What they do is they uh, they ask your body, and then they, they can move your hand, and they can find the pressure and stuff. They they know what's going on. It's it's uh, again, it's a it's a alternative uh, you know therapy, and there are, there are quite a few very very good ones who, when they do testing for allergies, they don't give you all the shots and stuff. Like if you if you think that you're allergic to something, you go to an allergist, they're going to give you a shot of everything that they think they think. What they do is poke holes in you all over, and if it swells up and turns red, you're allergic. Uh, <laughs> a health kinesiologist would ask your body, and then through muscle testing, to, um, they would tell you if you're, uh, if you're allergic. Uh, we went to a class on it, and I remember they took a peppermint tea bag and put it on the, on the lady's stomach, and then uh, she, she was allergic to peppermint. But it was, you know, again, they don't put holes in you, they don't do things. So um, alternative medicines that use psychic energy, and psychic energy is just the energy of a person. It's what everybody has. It's like having an aura. It's like where you're connected in the universe. You know, where your religion is most of the time is chosen because as you grow up, and as you get older, though, you can choose your religion. You can choose whether you want to do this, you want to do that. Um, choices are being taken away a lot now, so it's a, it's kind of hard to, uh, to do what you want. But you need to go here. That's it. Go to your heart. Figure out what you want to do. If you want to connect with the trees, the trees talk. They tell you everything that's going on. You'll know when someone crosses your property line. You can actually sit in your house and project your energy out all around your property and know when someone crosses your property line. Know when, know when there's a, an animal coming around. There's just things that you can do. Native Americans did it all the time. And when I say Native Americans, that's because they didn't have modern conveniences like the cell phone. Uh, there was not a lot of electrical interference in the air. There's not a lot of things that are going on. Now you can put a fence up and keep your dog in your property in the old days you just had to teach your dog, don't go past this line. And they didn't. Uh, I'm surprised that they don't put the collars on children to keep them from <laughs> they don't, But that, that would be a way to make, to make someone listen to what, you're, you know, what they want to do. But you can project your energy as far out as you want. You can contact other beings anywhere because there's no limit to what the, uh, the mind can do. And there's no... There's no place that you don't have to, that, well, there's a lot of places you don't want to go, but there's not a, a lot of places that you're locked out of. It's like if you sit in your home and you're reading a book, that book becomes your, becomes your universe right then. And then if you're, or if you're watching a movie on TV, that's your universe. That's what you want to be. So you can make up whatever universe that you want to be, uh, that you want. If you... Um, like certain kinds of music, as soon as you put that on, your heart then goes to where that music takes you. And it's important for you to understand that you can go anywhere. That you can, because you're psychic, you're, you're, you're a human, you, you have all these things. Uh, there are some people who are very different, who uh, can do things because of practice, they can do things a lot more than you can do, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it. You know, the one thing you have. I don't think anybody here has a chance of becoming president of the United States, uh, but, uh, but, <laughs> <I'm disappointed. laughs> but if you are have enough strength, you can still attract a number of quality people in your life in order to have the type of life that you want. And uh, you don't have to put a sign on your forehead that says, you know, uh, Democratic, Republican, or whatever. To, in order to join a group of people, what you need to do is open up your heart because other people are psychic. Everybody's psychic. They recognize these things, whether or not they agree 
or whether or not they allow it to happen, that's their issue. It's not your issue, it's their issue. And if, you're, uh, if you want to do psychic readings, um, you just have to pick you know, what you want to do and how you want to do it, what tools you want to use. I have tarot cards, uh, um, there's, like I say, people use a, a bone, they, there's a lot of different things. And all you have to do is go online and look up and see what resonates with you. You know, that type of thing. Who wants to see what's in his goodie bag? I do. Oh. If I, when I go in, I think I, I think I have my, one thing I have is a timer. Because once I start reading, I have no idea about time. So if the person's paying for 15 minutes, I have to set that so that I know it's 15 minutes or up. Because once I go, I don't know where I'm at. And it, it's a... It's not my issue with the time, it's the issue of whoever I'm working for, that type of thing. So at the, at the shop, they're always yelling at me. And during uh, uh, psychic fairs, everybody has, uh, well, most everybody has a timer because when they start to do readings, they are not there. They, um, it's like sitting in front of a candle. Um, if you've ever been hypnotized, one of the things that we, we learned in, hypnot in a hypnosis class is, all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. You allow yourself to get relaxed and then someone can guide you through that. If you sit with a candle and watch a candle, you will go someplace else. It's just that mesmerizing. And that's the other term with hypnosis. It was mesmerizing. And if you have tapes that you have um, affirmations on and you play those while you're sitting there relaxed watching the candle or just looking out the window, uh, how many people have a window by their uh, their sink so that when you wash, if you wash the dishes, you look out the window and you see you see what's going on. M most people have gotten away from that because they have um, dishwashers. Dishwashers, so they don't they, they don't stand at the sink. They're not grounded by you know putting their hands in the water. And it, it sounds like a simple thing, but it really it's that's a lifestyle. That's how your heart gets uh, gets better. Um, sometimes I, I don't know how people live in the city. I really don't. Uh, you look out the window and you see the building next door. You come out of the of, you know thing and walk down the hall. You go down in the street and there's so many people, so much information. If you are a practicing psychic, you really have to you know put earphones on or something to take take that information and kind of blast it off. So um, we don't have too many. Uh, apartment buildings in, in you know Ulster County, so it's a, I know there's some up in Kingston and there's uh, some uh, things. If I go down to the housing center down in uh, whatever that drive is down there, um, Boniface, right? Boniface. If I walk in halls, I do this. I bounce off the walls because there's so much energy in there and there's so many things. Even if it's not happening at that time, it happened before. Being psychic means that you are aware of all time, all places everywhere so sometimes you have to kind of pick and choose you know your map and where your limits want to be but uh, it's 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 a fun thing I hear whistling and I'm not sure what whistling is supposed to mean but I hear whistling so if somebody's whistling they're not whistling uh, right to <laughs> anything that I know let's see what else I got in my bag here do we need we can look at I don't have my crystal ball with me, um, so. I don't know what it is. Okay, what I have is some stuff that I put on my table. And we'll look at this and see. Uh, yeah, how many people have crystals at home? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> each, yeah, each each crystal means something to that person. It means something that um, sometimes we can pick up a crystal and. Uh, know what it means, know what it does for us. Black tourmaline is a very grounding crystal, so that takes you and keeps you centered and grounded. Um, That's the one that the, the, uh, uh, at the crystal center. That uh, the man can t you know gives you some the tourmaline to hold, right? And you can tell which it works for you and which doesn't work. Right, and what happens with tourmaline, it gives you balance. Uh, you carry it in your pocket, yes. and then what happens is that you don't fall as much, you don't stagger as much, and it, he gives a test where you put your hand out, yes. and he tries to 
to, yeah. to, to knock you off balance. And with the tourmaline, you're not off balance. And it's something with the chemical makeups of things. It's just, it's just how bodies react to it. The other thing is uh, uh, amethyst is supposed to be a high, very, very high energy. I'm not always sure about amethyst. There's quartz. Um, I forgot what that the one is. Quartz is supposed to be rose quartz is, is more for your, um, that's for love and uh, heart things. Uh, though the heart is supposed to be, a uh, heart color is supposed to be green. So, and this is a pendulum. And how many people use a pendulum? Okay, it's, and some people use them a lot, other people, um, I can just, I can get yes and no out of it. And this pendulum is a, uh, has a African trading bead. It supposedly was picked up by, uh, they, what, in Africa they didn't have, they don't have, they didn't have money uh, amongst the tribes, so they would trade beads and, and things. So I have, I have that one. And again, dowsing is another way of using a, your psychic ability. It's just a matter of applying your intu intuition and getting a measurable reading for it. And it's called subtle energy. It knows no time, no space. Um, the other thing that a psychic can do is uh, remote viewing. It's a, it's a way to learn to send your energy to someplace else to actually see uh, what's there and you don't have to be told where it is you just have to be you just have to know this is what you're looking for so uh, there, there were classes given around the area for um, you know uh, remotely doing I haven't seen any classes in a long time but it's a it's a, it's a very interesting I in a, in a dowser group we were uh, talking and um, if you gave me a picture or a a drawing of what your house was or told me what your house what you want to look at I could actually go to your house through my mind look at the house tell you what's going on and one time I did a reading and um, they had a thatched roof and it was uh, very rustic and stuff and I told it, it just took too long for the information to come I would go to the house get the information and then come back and uh, I found out that uh, it, I was up in Kingston doing it, but the house was actually in South Africa, and I didn't know, but I described the house, I described everything, but this is things that I've practiced, and I've had it all my life, so it's not something that, you know, everybody has the ability to do it, you just have to learn, if you want to learn remote viewing, you can really get uh, get a lot of information, uh, the government has a lot of remote viewers, they, they track Russian submarines, they track uh, things that are going on on Mars, they track things that are going on on, on the moon. Um, how many people have been to the moon? Anybody? <laughs> I, I'm serious when, have you had a dream where you're, or a vision that you're in the moon? Because a lot of people have that. There was supposedly something going on on the moon. So, um, But visions and dreams are escape plans, are learning plans, are learning things that, that you want to do. And sometimes we dream of the future. Sometimes we dream of the past. Now, uh, if you dream of the future and you have all of these uh, precognitive dreams and you worry about are you responsible to tell the people about the dreams, it's not a responsibility. But if you have something and you know that someone may be making a bad choice, you can let that person know that they're making a bad choice. and. Sometimes they'll listen, sometimes they'll call you cuckoo, and again, you know, you might get burned at the stake, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's what you want to do. It's, it's how you want to handle your progression in life, and what is the ultimate goal in, in your life? You know, is it to live to be 99? <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it to, uh, to do something uh, positive with your life? You know, uh, maybe you don't know what your life purpose is, and that's what everybody comes to a psychic for. What's my life purpose? Sit down and think about it. You may be a great cook, a great grandmother, a great mother. There's a whole bunch of things that are out there that we miss because we're not connected to the heart. Um, let's see. I don't, does anybody have a PhD in here? 
No? Master's degree? No? Okay. Uh, sometimes that's what we were told as youngsters to, to get, is to get as much education as you can. But if you don't apply that education, again, through the heart, um, I, I just read that people are complaining that they have $300,000 in student loans and two master's degrees and can't get a job. Yes. They went after the wrong thing. You know, what do you want out of life? And if you put your psychic energy to, to uh, working at it, you're definitely going to find out there are a lot of things that you can do. What else you got in there? What else I have in there? Oh, talisman, talismans. I don't know if I have any talismans in here. Now, who knows what a talisman is? I'm here for it. <laughs> okay. What would you say a talisman is? Yeah, what's a talisman? Talisman is something that you um, have that, like a relic. Yes. Like it's some, a relic. Right. Talisman. Wedding ring. A talisman is a wedding ring. It means something. Sometimes it gets, the meaning gets a little messed up, but well, of course, mm -hmm. of course, Star David, um, Star Solomon, um, a bracelet that has stones in it that has, have a significant purpose in your life. There's all kinds of things that are talismans, and talismans are what makes you the person that you are. If you want to, um, you know, not stumble and fall, you put a piece of black tourmaline in your pocket. If you want to um, become prosperous and stuff, you put a garnet in your pocket because that garnet will allow that to happen. Um, this is a magical stone, so if I want to connect with magic, I, 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 I wear my bracelet. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you have. Now, let's see, talisman, talisman. That's a very common talisman. This could be a wedding ring. Well, you said you have any ideas? A common talisman that you would you would carry. Um, What's a rabbit's foot? Yes, a, ra a rabbit's foot is a. Uh, we don't see those anymore, but uh, a rabbit's foot is a sign. Of, uh, you know, that's for luck. Uh, there could be a talisman. You could have a uh, shamrock that you carry in your pocket. There's a lot of things that you can carry around that will give you the energy of that particular item and. The energy is put in there by your psychic ability to draw in that energy. So, um, I'm trying to think of something. Um, it's like if you get married in a, uh, a church, the priest blesses the ring. He puts the the Christ energy or whatever whatever energy of the of the particular religion. They put that in there so that that. That is a, a symbol of, of, of your love and things. So there's a lot of things that, could, that you can wear or carry to increase your personal power. And personal power is what it's all about. Sometimes we need things for protection. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what would you say would be a, a, a protective talisman? Which one is it coming? My tie. What's that? My tie. My tie. Yes. Well, that, me. right. That's. Mm -hmm. That's a, 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 a Lisa. It could it could be a crucifix mm -hmm. in, the, in the Christian church. It could be uh, just something that uh, your mom gave you or your grandma gave. Something that was carried down that you consider as being protective on what you have. Uh, sometimes we have a certain uh, shirt or a piece of clothing that we wear because it's good luck, but it also protects us for the you know for the day. So it's. There's a lot of different things you can put on there to uh, to do that. Yes, yes, no. Okay. I, I, when you are about finished, I'd like to share my little story about how I found out I was psychic. Oh, we well, can share your story. You want me to share it now? Share it now. Now. Okay. Um, years of, over the years, we've uh, uh, had a friend in Deb Medenbach who used to write for the Times Herald Record. And what she would do is she would get a group of what she would call the sensitives together. And she would line up places for us to go to check out the energies, building, cemetery, whatever the case might be, a house, old house. And um, in our network at that time, we had a variety of people. And we tried to pick different people each time. So you'd have your true psychics, your dowsers, your intuitives, you know, any of those kind of things. 
But I was always tagging along because I was just like the third wheel. Because I never thought I had all these powers. We had to go um, into the historical house in Newburgh, New York. It's down by the water. I forget what street it's on. But it's an old stone house, four levels. And what she, she would do is, is the, the sensitives were sent in with no information at all. They would just blindly go into place and see what they could pick up. Then afterwards, we would be debriefed, and then Deb, who had done all the homework and knew what was going on, would let us know whether we hit, did good or not. So we were in the, this house. We went in on the first street level, and then we went up a couple of floors above. I think we were picking up medical. It was a doctor's the, office at one time, yeah. and so some of the people were picking up the fact that there was medical stuff going on. We were up on the top floor, and I forget what the other people were thinking about, but I'm standing there, and I'm just looking around, minding my own business, and all of a sudden I yell, hats! I see hats! There was nothing in this room. There was nothing in this room to, to tell me that there were hats. But there were hats. I was picking up this thing about hats. So we got finished with the th first three levels, and they took us down to the basement level, and, but, which was also had the street side, one side with the street side. And what do you know what was going on in that level? They had the mannequins all set up, and they were doing a thing on the historical hat factories in Newburgh. I was on the fourth floor and I was seeing hats. He says to me, he said, what took you so long? <laughs> I've only been, we were, I mean, this was years ago. I mean, we've been together for 54 years, but you know, after 40 years, I should, what took me so long? Well, I don't know what took me so long. It's just that over the years of being in all the training that we've been doing and, and, and that kind of thing, it just suddenly, I believed in what I was picking up. And I just, I yelled it out, because I said, yeah. oh my goodness. And, and, and this is what things that we're trying to impress on people is you may not think that you have psychic abilities, because you don't trust what's coming into exactly. your mind. Mm -hmm. So what you have to learn to do is go with it. And, if it, and we had so much fun going with Deb, because the, guy, the people, all, we all, had wonderful experiences and it certainly helped to trigger my abilities of being able to pick up on things because I was with like-minded people mm -hmm. and we were all helping each other. And this group that we were with, the, the two or three groups that we had been with, that uh, it was phenomenal watching these people work because we were hitting everything. We mm -hmm. were hitting every bit of, between the group, we would come up with every bit of information that Deb uh, researched. On the and it's it's in the it's fascinating. It's in the Ulster County Ulster County Magazine that they came out with the um, with the Times Herald Record yes. in that building. And she's talked about medical. I walked into the building and I saw body parts <laughs> everywhere. Right. Just, but it wasn't bad body parts. It was that's where it, it turns out that he had a medical uh, school there, yeah. and they would have all of these parts that they would think. So it wasn't like a serial killer or anything. But it was not fun. But uh, we did the church in Kingston, and I walked in and I said, "Oh, there was a fire here, and there's a fire in the bell tower." And then I saw the up up on the, uh, uh, the where the balcony. choir is up on the balcony. Yeah. Someone took a header off the balcony and smashed into the floor. And I, it's my old Dutch Reformed church up in Kingston, <clears throat> and the minister that was there verified everything that he was. But then what happened is he went out to the. The cemetery that's by the side, all the graves are lined up. One was turned because he was the one that took the header. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's, it's things that you can see if you pay attention. And it's the one thing you have to remember, it's not your responsibility. It's, you know, you don't have to carry that stuff. But we've been to, uh, to all kinds of houses and, and to uh, different things. Uh, it's just amazing on how much is out there. I've only been attacked by a ghost once. The Shanley House. Anybody know uh, the Shanley uh, Hotel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the only place that I've ever been, uh, had a problem with. And I was walking and I went out to the, in the hallway and someone threw a wet blanket over me. I couldn't breathe. I, was, I went down on my knees 
and the photographer, the newspaper, like, <laughs> he's taking pictures, and uh, they finally got me out of the house. But that's the only time that I've ever been had a, a problem with me. Yeah. And yeah. I couldn't even go up on the floor. I couldn't. I could, couldn't get past the second floor in that building. If you've never been there, it's a fascinating place. But I was sitting and talking with the owner about what was going on, and all of a sudden I see Susie, the other psychic that was with us, carrying him down the stairs, followed by the, the photographer taking pictures, taking him outside to give him some air and whatnot. And they had the pictures to prove that something was going on, and it attacked yeah. him. <laughs> There's a, a number of haunted houses in the area. If you're a psychic, um, it's, it's always fun to go. Most of the time, <laughs> but um, it's like if you walk into a um, a restaurant and you sit down and you notice that things aren't right for there. Try to figure out what your feelings are, or what's not right. Um, 